This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. This is it. This is episode number one zero zero. Episode <gasps> one hundred. Holy Woo! shit! <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yes, and as you can hear. My co-host Omega is here, and also Holly is here. Yay! Yes. <laughs> Wanted to have a couple of others, but they ended up getting busy with a couple of things. Cat is still in the middle of moving, otherwise she would also be here. Um, I also wanted to get uh, Lady Renee, who is now going by some other name she hasn't finalized just yet. But, uh, the artist formerly known as Renee? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they did want to be here for this. It's just life happened to the both of them, so... But, but that happens, you know? I tried, tried to work it out the best I can, but unfortunately, even if you try your best, it's like, ah! We can always dub them in and post. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just leave, like, don't you think so? And then, like, leave silence open. You can dub that in. They're like, I totally do. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, no. <laughs> I don't think so, Gummer. <laughs> and it would only, that would only work if they did it just like Al Borland. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, 100 episodes. So naturally, this is this is just kind of less of a a holy shit, what the fuck news week, and more just like talking more about the show retrospective type thing, a little bit here and there because it's 100 episodes. And if this is your first show, then uh, welcome. You just you came in on a really really interesting time. <laughs> if you want to hear the our best p- listener, yes, Paul. yes. And if you want to hear our opinions on news, either go back and listen to episode 99 or wait until 101. <laughs> it's a good thing, too, because I saw a piece of news yesterday. I was like, oh, Gomer's going to go crazy and he sees it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. There's been plenty of them in the past couple of weeks. It's like, ah! Some of them, some of them I'm saving for constructive deconstruction. Some of them, I was like, ah! But Everything's exploding. Yes. Everything explodes and everything just goes poof and be gone. And replace with something else. Hopefully, something cute and fluffy. Yay! <laughs> is, I like fluffy. <laughs> oh, so, so what this what this whole retrospective is is for those if you've not listened to the show for long, or even if you have and you just like hearing the history again, because I know I've mentioned it a couple of times on previous shows. But I, I it, for one, it's the 100th episode, and for another, it's probably been long enough that you know I, I feel okay talking about it again. Um, how this show actually got started, uh, for those who don't know, was uh, 2008. I was in my sociology class, and my sociology professor, teacher, whoever, said, you know, you, you have a voice for radio. And I'm like, well, hey, you know, thank you. And at the same time, I was listening to a show called Two Cents. Two Cents! Yes. I'm helping. <laughs> Oh yeah. So, and the both of those combined is like, you know what? Why, why not give it a shot? Give podcasting a shot. So I looked up some information, you know, see what I needed to do. Got myself a little thirty dollar Radio Shack mixer, a couple of microphones. Took all this stuff plus a laptop over to this trailer in Bonifay, Florida, with one of my friends, and we just started going at it. I had a little bit of a, of a different setup than I do now, because back then I was able to actually have like little sounders. And little background music here and there, which that was some hellacious mixing problems. <laughs> oh, but but one of the reasons why it was hellacious is because it was all going into the same thing because I didn't have every wire I needed. So I couldn't like listen to the sounder as well as whatever else I needed to do. So I pretty much had to look at the timers and guess by ear, which not no. necessarily, yeah, not necessarily the best way to go. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. I'll put that in there. And – you know, they always say you remember your first. Usually they mean you remember your first, usually something sexual. For me, for the, in this case, obviously not sexual. But my first news story, or at least one of my first, was a guy, a, a pedophile who had choked to death on a hot dog. Was it Florida? I don't remember. That, oh. That's the thing. I was like, I don't remember if it was Florida or wherever else. And I'm just thinking, that, that is, that just smacks of, I don't know if I'm, using it right but that smacks of irony to me it's, it's like you would think somebody who just 
and I think the joke I had made was, uh, you know, because at the time I was equating pedophile and child molester, when the technically a little bit different, but that's a whole different show. And, <laughs> yeah, it is a whole different show. <laughs> yeah, that is. <laughs> uh, but I, but but upon hearing that, I made the quip of, well, yeah, you know, I mean, all the time, you know, spending trying to go down on little boys, you know, something bigger than that, probably, you know, his throat wasn't used to it anymore. And I look back on it now, and I'm like, I really could have done something better with it. <laughs> oh. But yeah. it was one of those first things that go through my head. And and so a few episodes went by. You know, we did a few things. Had a couple of change-up and co-hosts. And about late 2008 is when I moved out to Casper, Wyoming, to, you know, to do some stuff there. And... While I was there, we got a few episodes out of the way with uh, Shoshone Rose, who is a really good friend of mine. Unfortunately, that ended up sort of falling a little bit apart because of life happening and this and that and eventually moving back to Florida again. And not long after that, we did try a couple of episodes over Skype because I had learned, okay, you can record shows over Skype. Great. So um, Lady Renee and I got together. You know, we decided, okay, let's give this a shot. We tried a couple of episodes. And that just kind of petered out for a bit. Then I discovered that guy with the glasses. <laughs> and I started doing videos. And eventually I'm like, you know what? Why limit it to just videos? I have this I have this show here that's just been kind of sitting here dormant. And now that I have a good video editor, I can put some like banner over it or whatever and put it up on Blip. And I got later Renee to start with me on that one. And that was the point where it was basically a reboot because technically if you want to be really technical i have done over 100 shows but in in this case i started the recount when i started putting them on blip and this is the 100th after that particular reboot so but the but but first so if you're a really hardcore fan you've heard all of them just saying Yes, uh, I kind of I gotta make sure I have the archives of the older ones up. There are a couple of them that have been lost to time, and and the fact that I got sick and my that laptop at the time took a direct hit. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Gross. Very gross and very. Things I don't need to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody needed to know that, but. Dear tech support, I have a question. Yes. Can you recover my information after this goo has been on it? Well, as long as as long as the some parts of the of the hard drive weren't compromised, your data would probably be fine. It would just be expensive to uh, to recover it, and probably whoever you asked would charge you extra. Yeah, probably. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't know that at the time. So, Ugh. and even if I did, I was working Walmart. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but again, we rebooted the show, and it was at that point I'm like, okay, you know, what? let's try having guests. Maybe that'll I'll try drawing in a little bit here and there. And of course, my first guest was Mars Girl, <laughs> which you know I I enjoyed. We we had some fun. Uh, about I think about episode five is the first time we had Cat on the show, and it was just me and her because Renee was going through some life issues at the time, and in episode five is when. When the first seeds of like, okay, maybe Cat might be a good co-host eventually later on down the road or whatever was planted because we had we did the show and then like sat for like an hour just talking about whatever. And then it's like, you know what, we, we, we have this kind of thing going. We should do this more often. Unfortunately, I didn't have her on the show again until like, you know, uh, I think about a year or two later because uh, life happened because not long after that, I moved to Indy. <laughs> and... Well, unfortunate. I mean, that's good. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm sure Indiana is lovely. Well, the people aren't bad. It's it's the people in charge that are that are doofuses. Uh, but then most most of the people I I actually talked to around there are actually pretty decent. Uh, although most of the time when I was living up there was spent on the road. I uh, ended up having two trucking jobs. The first one of which ugh, didn't last too awful long, but it also kept me off the road longer. When I got the second one, I was able to be home on the weekends and thus could actually do more and. By that time, you know, Renee needed somebody to help with rent, so I said, okay, I'll move in. And so I did, and the show got started up. And it wasn't long after that that I pulled on a certain somebody to to fill in because Renee was still going through life stuff and I needed a co-host. And, and I, I 
I seem to remember. Wait, what was her name? Oh, yeah, that was Holly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think I remember that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that time it was me. <laughs> yes. And, and, and even before we actually got Holly on proper, we had Omega on, too. With... That's true, yeah. You were, like, going to be in my show, and I'm like, all right, that's cool. I've got a mic. Sure, let's, let's do this thing. Yeah, because uh, cause after that brief hiatus... When, when I was doing the first trucking job, the first one when we came back was Diamanda Hagen. <laughs> and I remember for the longest time, she was like, put me on fast speed talk, put me on fast speed talk. And I'm like, okay, you know, we'll, we'll work something out. <laughs> and we finally did. Uh, and then I think, I want to say, I want to say Holly's first episode, what was it? I want to say it was either Dickman or a Witchy Bunny. I know Witchy it, Bunny. It was, okay. That's right. The Bunny Show, and then I think it was yeah, the it was, week after was Dickman. Or somewhere in that time. <laughs> uh, I don't have my list in front of me, damn it. <laughs> oh. But yeah, that was that was actually... That, was, that, that, that impressed me enough. I was like, yeah, we're keeping her regular. <laughs> and, and look at us now. How many... God, how many years? Almost... We're coming up close to about a year and a half, two years since you've been... You know, yeah. Yeah, so, so you you are currently the longest running co-host on this show, on a regular co-host, currently. Woo yes. <laughs> oh, and and of course the time that Cat was finally made, you know, a a, a permanent, you know, co actual co-host. Um, I in in the course of my driving, I like to go meet up with people. I've that's how I met my girlfriend at the time, Brooke. You know, got to see her and all of that. Got to meet up with Iron Liz a couple of times. And a couple of times, I got to meet up with Kat over in St. Louis. And the first time, we was just like, oh, meet up, whatever. And I'm thinking, you know, at this point, we'd had like two or three shows where she had been on. And it's like, you know what? Fuck it. Sat down over dinner. I'm like, you want to be on the show? She's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we did the vlog announcement and everything. It was pretty awesome. And so she came on. And eventually, we had Josh Hadley on of uh, What the Fuck, Radio Drome, and Lost in the Static, and, well, and producer of all these other shows over at 1201 and Beyond. And, and he was on with me and Kat, and that, obviously, if you if you actually listen to the 1201 and Beyond shows, Kat is now also a co-host over on What the Fuck. <laughs> so it's like, it, it all leads up to different things, and it's like, I like to think that, yeah, you know, I, I, I got those two talking to each other, and eventually, boom, there you go. <laughs> Uh, oh god and and then eventually you know I was needing a, like a backup co-host so I talked to Omega yeah. and 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 it was like okay we need you you know backup or whatever and then I'm like you know what fuck it I'm just gonna make it a three co-host rotation and finally just uh, done it just fuck it Omega you're regular boom <laughs> I was like alright yeah you I'm just yeah yeah, you, you just pretty chill. Like, okay, sure, if I can do it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I, I would be remiss to to gloss to not mention this at all if we're talking about the history of the show. But uh, early last year, we did, you know, the show did get picked up with that certain internet company. <laughs> yeah. Sure, company. Yeah. Yeah, big quotation marks there. Be so well, no, because Citizens United, so a company can be a person, so and basically yeah. the company was one person. So. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, what? Nothing. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying. Uh, which, incidentally, it was exactly fifty episodes ago, <laughs> and it's an episode that has Holly on it. <laughs> that was the first one produced under it, so it was like, huh? Oh God! But. That that all happened, and you know things and stuff happened. We all and then know that. everyone sued. Amen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> everyone sued, and we're all owed money, and I do mean all of us, because because while while there were some times where I did get some pay, that was always split between my co-hosts. So when I say when I say yeah, you owe me money, it's more me and my co-hosts or whoever is left to to actually uh, give money to. So it's like, yeah, you, you know, you don't just owe me. You owe, you owe like, uh, let's see, one, two, three other people, because Port Charlie Podcast also got its start, you know, through that particular, quote unquote, company. Yeah. But um, 
Yeah. Which which I ha- I have to say that was that was prob- that, that being my second podcast. I I thought that was a good move on my part cuz think about it. Nobody else did, uh, cuz uh, I don't want to say nobody because I know there will be somebody out there. No, I do a podcast on General Hospital and be like, "Where the fuck were you?" You should have <laughs> yeah. him on as a guest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, go on my podcast now. We talk about that too. Yeah, there you go, and and it was it was great. I I knew none of the three of you would probably have wanted to do it because you, none of you seemed like the type to me that would have done, you know, doing a soap opera podcast. I would riff soap operas. I think that'd be pretty cool. Well, that works too. Okay, <laughs> that'd be cool for a convention. Yeah, riffing on a someone write that down. Yeah, riffing on a soap opera. There you go. <laughs> Oh, and and you know what? It's 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 basically turned into kind of an hour long review podcast because we go over you know, obviously the good points, the bad points, what we liked, what we didn't like, just just like a regular review. It's just one hour in in audio. Uh, and and of and I I bring up the Port Charlie podcast because born out of this show. Speaking of things that were born out of this show, Omega. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh huh huh huh. Oh, and incident. It, yes, we also have we have an actually an official spinoff. Apparently, I, I, I guess I guess we can call it official spinoff. Uh, lesbian talk. Lesbian talk. Yes, that we have is a theme song. Yes, you have an actual <laughs> theme song. I've I've got this like little theme music thing from uh, the uh, uh the the free music library uh, by that well, Kevin McLeod. That's because a fan contacted Hagen and was like, "Hey, so." I know you like heavy metal, so I wrote you a heavy metal theme song. And she's like, what? And he's like, sure. So it was just, you know, credit me, and there you go. And we're like, really? Wow. You're an honorary awesome. lesbian, though. Yes. That is, that is pretty awesome. Uh, and and there's one guy, uh, Skizip888, who, for fun, apparently, designs, like, lesbian talk-specific Doctor Who intro bits that I use when we talk about Doctor Who. Yeah. I've, I've seen some of those. Those are pretty cool. He's really talented. Yeah, I, I, I will definitely give you that one. Uh, which, of course, Lesbian Talk is now spreading out everywhere. We, you're on... I mean, like a rash. Like a rash. Definitely <laughs> <laughs> uh, more all planets. over the place. And yeah. Not itchy. Yeah, not very itchy at all. Except for some people. I, I do notice the trolls, and I just look at them and they're like, oh, you sad, pathetic little person. It's so bad, because we really don't ever talk about... We talk about gay rights sometimes, but not a lot. Usually we talk about Dragon Age and Doctor Who. Yeah. And, and horror movies. And, you know, people are always like, well, how, how dare this just misandrist, you know, homo-heterophobic... Like, we never talk about that. We talk about Daleks. I yeah. mean, if you want the real truth. And, like, even even our last episode, everybody was angry. And it was a kind of controversial episode mm-hmm. because we talked a bit about feminism wherein I said, don't associate me with the word. I don't want to be involved. I just want to pay my taxes and play Xbox. Leave me alone. And so it was about the, you know, least misandric something could someone could have been. And they were still like, God damn it, lesbians. <laughs> yeah, I, I do read those. Although there was one. You don't speak for all lesbians. Yes, we do. We got them to sign off. <laughs> we talk. Oh yes. The lesbian hive mind and. Well, no, I, I went. I went to the council. And, uh, <laughs> I put. I put in an, uh, you know order for for a motion, and you know that the chair granted me uh, permission to speak, and I said I've got this thing, and they were like, well, that's good, dear. So you know. Yeah. Every yeah. lesbian. Oh yes, and of course, lesbian talk is spread. If you. you you know, after after the fallout with that company, quote unquote, that company, um, Lesbian Talk eventually, well, of course, ended up on my site because both you and Hogan have been members of my site since. Oh God, how long now? Jeez. Like the beginning. Yeah, practically the beginning. You know, like you, you, the two of you were among the first to be brought on. I think I think only Lacey has been on longer than the both of you. That's true. So, so. After her, it's like the two of you, and then all these others are getting picked up, and some of them have left recently, unfortunately. But you know that's that's its own thing, and I wish them well. If they're listening, I do wish you guys well. Um, you know, and whatever you do, <laughs> you know, sad to see you go, but life happens. That's all I got to say about that. Uh, and I know, I mean, obviously, lesbian talk is on Tig with Tig, yay. 
which which full disclosure here I, I know i've mentioned it on tumblr and if you subscribe to the take we take secrets blog on tumblr or whatever yes i have put all of these shows up for audition for uh tig with tig i'm just like throwing everything at them and seeing if one of them sticks well, that's, there's nothing wrong with that you say that like it's some kind of like secret sin i mean well no i because at first i wanted to kind of keep it a secret oh and it was it was like okay if i'm picked up then yay you know surprise everybody but at the same but then it's like you know what i really would like some feedback which nobody has given me fuckers <laughs> see <laughs> Cause see, I, I see all these sites. You know, they have their trolls and everything. And I'm and I, every now and then, I don't do it often, but every now and then, I'll sit there and be like, "Oh, I want some trolls." And then they look at me like, "I'll I, troll you, you if you want." Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Then it, and then they'll look at me like, "You, you fucking crazy?" Be like, "Well, at least there'll be something going on on my site than fucking pingbacks." I'll troll you. <laughs> <laughs> I have um. a VPN. I'll be like, "God damn it, Gomer, your site is too awesome for me." <laughs> oh, lols. And you'll be like, wait a second. Wait. Uh, I suspect something's not right here. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think in that sense you would be a horrible troll. I probably would. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and, and, and as far as trolling goes, like if trolls come to my site, of course they'll be, you know, if they're really horrible, they'll be dealt with accordingly and everything. But at the same time, I would be thankful at least for some trolls because that's like one more set of eyes that has seen it and might spread it around <laughs> to other people. Because, hey, a view is a view, people. A download is a you download. You should have a requirement. If you intend to troll, you have to watch the episode first. Yes. There you go. <laughs> I want your click. Yes. Give me your click, and then you can troll all the hell you want. Uh, and and at least be creative in your trolling people and use it use the episode in question you know if if you're going to troll me on something i say make sure i've said it because because you're know, going back to cite examples from the, this year's reading yes <laughs> pretty much i'm not, like going back going back to the trolls on uh on the comment section in t on tigwitig for lesbian talk i mean i've seen some of them it's like wait I've listened to pretty much every episode of Lesbian Talk out there. Where the fuck do they say that? <laughs> we got called racist on one of the... the we put a clip episode up. Mm -hmm. um, because I think this was when I was going to... Um, going to be over in the UK for a week. Yeah. And literally everyone's like, stop being so racist. And literally the only racist thing I could think of was I said that they should send Sherpas up Mount Everest to collect up all the dead bodies of, of people. Because, like, Sherpas are, you know, they have, they're adapted now. And I was mm -hmm. like, was I being racist towards Sherpas? I mean, what? <laughs> if you're a Sherpa, uh, write the show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a Sherpa, write the show. We want to hear from you. Yes, yes. Uh, Artigomerprod at gmail.com. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, um. But the other, the other show that has been born out of all of this nonsense since I've spent you know, rebooted it on blip and now we're up at episode 100 is constructive deconstruction which holly also co-hosts <laughs> yeah that's a great show yeah i mean if you guys don't watch it or listen to it you totally should because it's a great show yes. just say you know yeah. you have a new co-host and everything he's pretty great too yes and new artwork and new artwork yes yes and and we've and the art style is finally getting away because because when it comes to the title card artwork, whenever it comes to, like, all of us, of course, me, it would have my outfit that you probably see on the screen right now if you're watching the video version, you know, the overcoat and everything, which I'm still keeping, which, you know, no big deal there. But Holly, for the longest time, she always had the bunny ears because, well, Holly Bunny. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the first piece of, like, official title card artwork to kind of break away from that. Yeah, I saw it. I was like, huh. And it was weird, especially because it was like, I guess – she only looked at the one picture of me, so I have a scarf on because you can't see my neck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, huh, that was an interesting choice. <laughs> yeah, which I, I will admit, I, I, I did point her to that particular scarf picture because I thought, you know what, no matter what, the scarf would look cool. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, it does. <laughs> or at least I think so. <laughs> yeah. You know that's your your secret like... vampire. <laughs> Could be. Could be. Hmm. Although I don't know, I did 
at at one point I was trying to get some commission drawings for like alternate versions of everybody that I talked to and like everybody on the show and everything, and I'd gotten to Cat, and I had commissioned a picture of Cat as though she were a vampire. And the reason, the thing that kind of uh, you know set my mind into that direction was one of her. I think it was last Halloween pictures where she had dressed up as a vampire or what have you, and I was like, yeah, that's gonna be awesome. And, and and I will say this, that w- before I do any commissions, of course, if somebody's going to be like, oh, the, were they okay with that? Yes, they were. I, I always get permission before I, I get commission artwork of somebody. Unless it's a surprise. And, but if it's a surprise, odds are I know they're going to be okay with it. You know, <laughs> odds are. Always ask for permission before you draw somebody as a vampire, kids. Yes. <laughs> consent oh, counts. Yes, consent does count there. Oh. Uh, but yeah, constructive deconstruct. It is definitely the youngest show, and it, it took a while, it took a few months to just actually get going because yeah, before it was delays and finding the the right combination of hosts and yeah, like uh, even before then, I was actually thinking about starting up a, a different podcast with several other people, one of which being uh, Lady Renee, you know, doing the podcast thing with her again. But that ended up kind of falling through. And then it was like, you know what? We had a, a segment on this show here called Focus Point, which I guess kind of just has now become constructive deconstruction because I don't remember the last time we did a Focus Point on this show. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Focus Point. Translation, how angry can we get Gomer at the news? Yes. Which now can be pretty much the entire show now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But, but, but the... The other show is probably going to be more entertainment based, you know, around like movies, TV, or what have you. I, I think we were even cons- thinking about, you know, uh, porn, adult, you know, the adult industry news and type stuff, like what's going on here or there, or what have you. But that that idea fell through, and then I ended up approaching Holly about the about constructive deconstruction, which I don't think was named at that point. I I might have had it named, I might not have. And we were no, with... I, I think that you just told me the the premise that it was gonna be like an, an hour long focus point. Yeah, and and we were actually gonna have Brooke, who is who is my uh, ex girlfriend, and for all intents and purposes, ascended fangirl, because she started out as a fangirl. We met, we got together. She actually did an episode of uh, Thespian Talk. Uh, I think it was, dude, I think it was last year. In fact, almost a year ago. She she did an episode because she had to fill in incidentally for Holly because <laughs> Holly was sick that week and we were like you know I'm here let's do this let's let's do this show and we actually had a lot of fun and and so it's like okay we'll have all three of us together same show that would be great and then life happened to Brooke and it was really horrible and it was to the point to where she had to go back home to take care of some family issues. Mm. And then, you know, and I was still talking to her through all that, and she was dealing with her boyfriend at the same time. And I was like, okay, you know, whatever. And so then she gets back, and I, I give her like a month or two to, to basically, you know, because what had happened was really, really, really big thing, and she needed the extra time. But then after a few months, I heard nothing from her. I think, I think the only thing I had heard directly from her between then and the time we actually got constructive deconstruction started was something about Pokemon X or Y. And and that was because I ended up getting both of those games after New York Comic Con. And I was like, yeah, I finally get those. And she's like, I had them for a while. <laughs> and I'm like, eh. But, but she dropped off a face of the earth, and so we had to grab up somebody. And I think... I think I just actually put it out there, and Misha was one of the first ones to actually respond. And we we did a few episodes. Oh God, what was it like ten, fifteen episodes with her? Mm-hmm. And and I will say this for for all intents and purposes, she was a good co-host. I'm I'm not gonna lie, because I know because people who pay attention to my stuff and and know my site, know the people on my site. I know the name Misha Mayhem can be kind of kind of a, a, a more controversial slash polarizing slash drama magnet right now but I'm, I'm gonna say this on here she was a good co-host and and you know things happen 
we had to go our separate ways, so we had to find somebody else. And like a small audition thing, uh, a couple of people applied, including uh, Gonzo Link, who is now our new co-host on Constructive Deconstruction, who who is pretty damn awesome himself. And, yeah. And I have to admit, it's, it's kind of nice to have another guy on on a, as a regular because. I don't. I don't think I actually planned it this way, but most of my co-hosts are women. Yeah, it, no, you're true. just like like Charlie now from Charlie's Angels. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good morning, co-hosts. Your mission today. Oh God. You have now, to deal with the place too. Okay, now now somebody needs to draw to draw all three of you a, a, as Charlie's Angels. Somebody needs to do that. Yes. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> oh. I'm like have like instead of throwing shurikens like a small lobster there you go <laughs> <laughs> don't show me <laughs> i never took martial arts no giovanni no <laughs> uh and and some of the guests actually that brings to mind uh some of the guests we've had on before uh, like like we mentioned we've had witchy bunny on of course we've had hagen on several times so she is always a treat to have on the show even if she doesn't do too awful much, she's always a treat. Well, it's usually if I'm going to co-host and we're in the same country at the time. I'll be like, come be on the show. And she'll be like, oh, well, all right. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, she knew you from, like, back in the day. Yeah. See, here's here's the fun thing, though. Uh, Hagen, Lady Renee, and I, uh, also Iron Bite, uh, Axiom, who is a member of my site, uh, all five of us knew each other from uh, Fundy Say the Darndest Things website. Well, sp specifically their message boards, which is now split off to this whole other new thing that Iron Bite and I still frequent. Uh, Renee's no longer d having anything to do with that community outside, you know, a few of us. And Axiom, I, I don't know what's happened to her. I have not seen her put up any new videos lately, unfortunately, but I know life keeps her pretty busy. So, and and I can I can still poke at her and be like, hey, uh, what what's the dealio there? But oh, but we we still have like our little close knit, and of course everybody knows what Hagen and I are doing. <laughs> and sometimes we do it together. Bitching about uh, Republicans. Yes, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> it's my vote. Yes. Uh, and and I've even I've even seen Hagen on like Radio Drome. Yeah, they, they have her on pretty regularly. Um, usually when she's over visiting me, because then she's in a reasonable time zone. Because mm -hmm. even then, they um, they record pretty late. But yeah, she'll, she'll usually be on. I think um, she was on the last episode that Brad was on. I know that. And then usually they'll have her on, you know, once every while. Yeah. And, 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 if, and this is actually brought to mind something else real quick. Because the episodes with that company still have like all the little tags and teasers or whatever not tags or teasers but you know saying that yeah site here blah 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 when it's not really true and i actually thought about okay do i really want to go through and try and scrub through all of those especially since there are some times where it's like overlapping talking and and of course the original files when when i get the original files they're usually split where my you know like my recording is on one ear the uh, the call itself, you know, whoever's on the other end is on oh, the it's, or whatever. Oh, it's in mono? Uh, not, well, now it is. Okay. Yeah, or, or at least they're combined. You know, well, I guess that would be mono. But, so I can't just, like, go through it and, then like, scrub them out. But then I remembered, okay, wait a minute. Two, two Cents used to be on Rant Radio. And when two, when two has his shows archived or whatever, he still has the whole Rant Radio link or whatever, which is it's like, okay, you know, because... That that's fine. Of course, Rant Radio didn't screw him over either. He just kind of ended and then came back somewhere else. So I'm thinking, you know, with those episodes, keep it on, because it is, is as much as you know, I don't like the, the that quote unquote company anymore. It's still a part of the show's history, and I think it's important to know where the show has gone and where it's going to keep going. You know, important to remember where you've been, right? Well, I guess with, with, with Lesbian Talk, I mean, once I was able to... Well, not able, but once I decided, fuck this noise, I'm going to post this on my blip. Really, everybody that listened already knew what was going on. 
So I guess if anyone cares to Google, like in the future, like, oh, what is this? A lesbian podcast? I shall give it a listen. They'll they'll figure it out. You know, mm-hmm. the the Google well has been poisoned significantly. So I'm not concerned. Yeah. Which uh, speaking speaking of which, the, all all of the all three of my shows, uh, this show, Thespian Talk, uh, Port Charlie Podcast, and uh, Constructive Deconstruction, are all finally on iTunes. Woohoo! iTunes. Yes. Uh, they. The way they have it titled is a bit weird because they got the feed directly from FeedBurner, which titles things weird. I, I, don't, I don't know why, but uh, if you use WordPress, it's very easy to set up and do if you do it right. And uh, it's up there. Go grab them. If you're grabbing it from iTunes right now, hi. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for subscribing through iTunes. Oh, so that, as far as the history of the show, is pretty much about where we're at now, although Starting with the next one, I will start bringing on some guests again. I know uh, Lady Spaz has expressed interest in being a guest on the show. Uh, we'll just have to work out some time. Uh, there, there, and there are some other people, and especially if we get picked up by that guy with the glasses, I am going to ask Doug to get on the show again. And maybe he'll actually pay attention and check his messages, damn it. Because <laughs> he was on Attack of the Awesome at one point and and i gotta say he he was a real treat on there too um and and i told him you know i yeah, told him about the SB talk have him on he's like yeah yeah just use the the form on the site and, and get a hold of me and i did and he probably has about ten thousand messages <laughs> poor guy <laughs> they're nostalgic critic i think things and stuff love you write me back okay bye yeah pretty much i mean and and, it, and i suppose that's just the, the way things go when you have somebody that's that popular you want to get on the show yeah it's going to be a little difficult to actually talk to them oh well, you know because i mean health even for the poor charlie podcast i do want to bring some of the uh, people some of the actors or, or the producers or the writers that actually work on general hospital and just have them on the show short interview and have them give their thoughts about what happened because i know some of them do <laughs> let me tell you what my character never would have said that okay just... yeah <laughs> Uh, like there's one in particular, her name is Nancy Lee Grant, who I would love to have on the Port Charlie podcast. If you don't follow her on Twitter, you really should. She is just awesome. Uh, but I, I've I've rambled about my mostly my stuff on on this show. Um, uh, Holly, do you want to talk about like a little bit about your experience a little bit? Because I think I've rambled long enough for a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. I, yeah, I don't really know where to start. Um, but yeah, just one day on Facebook, you approached me and were like, hey, um, so I need a, a fill-in co-host uh, in about like an hour. <laughs> yeah, I was really are, bad at that point. Are, are you busy? <laughs> I was like, uh, no, that's fine. Um, what am I doing exactly? <laughs> yes. And yeah, <clears throat> that's how everything got started. And um, I, there was one, maybe like the third show that I was going to do. The second show was just another, oh, by the way, could you fill in again? Mm-hmm. And then the third show, I think, was the one that I was like, oh, I'm actually busy. And so Punky filled in for me. That's, oh, yeah, that's right. That was, I think I remember that week. I want to say that week was when we had Spaz Fox on. Yeah. <laughs> and then I came back um, and did my first official show. Mm-hmm. And then a couple of shows later, I was actually a guest. <laughs> yes. We, like, put you in the guest seat with, with, with somebody else there. Because cause it was like, you know, we had all these other people on. And, and at the time, you were working at Channel Awesome. And I was like, yeah. you know what? We, we haven't interviewed you yet. Yeah, we went about it in a kind of backwards way. You know, I didn't come on as a guest first and then become a co-host. I came on as a co-host and then became a guest. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but oh, wait, wait, wasn't there a time where it was like you and Vera turned the tables on me or something at some point with the whole guest thing? Oh, there was. Yeah, I did interview you. Yes. <laughs> was it Vera? I couldn't remember who it was. <laughs> I think it was Vera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so then we interviewed you. Yes, and that was fun. I need. I want to be interviewed more often. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, cause, cause, being interviewed 
was definitely an experience I, I I hadn't been through before, and you know I don't mind answering questions like that, especially if I could just throw something off the cuff that's just kind of either witty or funny or just make people look at me like I have mashed potatoes on my face. Yep. You know, but, uh, but yeah, and uh, you know then I got to ask you the the famous question or the. I guess formally famous question since we haven't asked it in a very long time, which yeah. is, do you have any theater experience? Yes, because that, because even though technically we we don't talk a lot about theater on the show, which I kind of need to change that up a bit. I oh, tried theater. to do, yeah, I tried to do that more often in the original iteration, but I, I was starting to feel like okay, you know, with the audience that I might have, you know, just plugging it through live journal and everything i i don't know how much of them i would reach for that but now that i have more of an expanded audience that i can possibly work with maybe you know at least going through some of these sites like even playbill.com and and doing like a week's worth of theater history or what have you might be something that could that could potentially work better uh i saw a play one time yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i've seen a few but yeah, but to keep to keep a little bit of the whole thespian theme in, besides my stage name here, um, you know, I would ask everybody, do you have theater experience? At least the first time interviews, first time. I drama. remember you asked me that when mm -hmm. technically Zar was uh, around. You were like, you're a guest too, and I'm like, mm, I don't know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think there have been like very few that didn't have any stage experience. Because um, I, I think one of the few, I think. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Dickman was one of them that didn't have actual. Uh, no, wait, no. I think he had backstage experience. Maybe. Listen, episode twelve, I think, is one that is. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. Somebody was an usher. I remember that. That was like the extent of their theater experience. Yeah. That counts. That counts. Yeah. Definitely. But uh, but yeah, it's like it's it's amazing who you would think. You know, I mean, especially if you just look at some people. I mean, you look at Nash for the first time. You look like a theater person. Yeah, you look at Nash for the first time. You would never guess that he that he would you know be doing musicals and shows, and that his favorite musical is chess, which I need to see. Well, you would know it if you watch RDA because he said it before. This is oh. true. <laughs> well, yeah, but I think it was at that point I wasn't able to do watch very many streaming shows, so unfortunately I missed that information. Uh, that was that was that was an interesting week because that was the week we had to delay because I got stuck out of hours in the middle of Arkansas. Because uh, you know, because you can only drive. That's one place you just never want to be. Yeah, I mean, granted, I was able to get a hotel room and, and I got reimbursed for that, so it wasn't all bad. But it was still in the middle of Arkansas, and I had to wait for all my time to reset. And then I'm like, let me get this delivered and let me go home. <laughs> They're like, all right, come back in a day or two. All right. <laughs> oh, that was that was a week. But at least I got to go down to Texas for a little bit, which crazy people, beautiful countryside. That's all I gotta say. Oh, so so any any other particular experience you want to talk about, Holly? Because I think I've kind of railroaded and talked over you a little bit there. No, oh, it's okay. Um, let's see. There was the the Andrew Dickman show. Which was, um, I, I love you, Andrew. I really do. But that might have been the worst show in my experience. <laughs> yeah, because uh, <laughs> that it last was like an hour story. of Mega Man. I had nothing to say. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, okay, well, I guess I'll just let them talk. And then that news story, it was like, oh, I still have nightmares about that news story. Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, God. Nothing will ever be that bad. No, I, I don't, and I don't, this is not, it's not an invitation to try either, <laughs> folks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, but yeah, we, we just did the whole Mega Man thing. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, okay, well, um, yeah, guys, I've never played Mega Man, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't have anything to add at all. Is that like yeah. a new meme? Let me tell you about Mega Man. <laughs> <laughs> we... No, it's just that they're both super super fans of Mega Man. Yeah. So they got to talking about it and then Really? Just... Gomer yes. into Mega Man? I wouldn't have guessed it in the world ever. <laughs> she said. <laughs> oh, but yeah, that one Yeah, that one fun for me, unfortunately not so much fun for you. 
Yeah. Uh, so we. Uh, and then there was the um, the show that we ended up scrubbing because we got drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Incidentally, that was that show would have been uh, Man- streaming Mantis's official time on the show, but we just had like some. Oh God, I don't remember how bad the news stories were, but they drove us all to drink. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It was like, no, 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 no. We can't put this out. And then ended up, the file got corrupted and got lost anyway, so. So I guess it was a good thing there. Yeah. But yeah, by the break, I'm pretty sure we were all drunk and. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, no, we're not putting this out there. No. That's a real show now. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, God. Oh, man. But eventually we did end up getting Mantis on the show proper, and it was – oh, God, that was one of the longest shows. I think I think you were on two of the shows that actually ran the longest in terms of runtime. This is back before I actually buckled down. It's like, okay, yeah. we need to keep it to either 90 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever. I, I think it's a tie between uh, Mantis and LC for the longest running time. What? LC talking? Yeah. Again. <laughs> Shocked. Yeah. Uh, and Holly, I think you were there for both of them. Uh, I don't know if I was there for LC. I was there for Mantis. Yeah, or it might have been somebody else for LC. I don't. I'm not quite sure, but but. Uh. I remember that Zara and I were on, and we had to stop in the middle and then restart recording, and then it took like a million million years. And you were like, "We're done," and I'm like, "Great!" And I fell asleep on the couch watching Netflix. <laughs> and I, I think I think you. You either pinged me, and Zara looked on my computer. You pinged her, and you were like, we didn't have to re-record it. It didn't work. And I was like, no, sleeping. <laughs> we had one yeah. of those. Too late, sleeping. Missed your chance. Yeah, that was... Ah, oh, that was... Just sometimes... Uh, thankfully, I've got a better computer now. But there were just some weeks where it would just be the internet, or the computer, or what have you, would just work against me so hard. Oh, yeah, there was the one show that I recorded on the floor of my bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it, the the router was in the basement, and that was as close to the router as I could I get. To be the, the, do you I keep your the router, like, the under the sink? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was in the basement, and the, the bathroom is the only room in the house that's directly above that area. Because otherwise, there's the stairs that go over it, and then I'm way further away from the router so yeah ah but i mean even even when i got back here to florida i would try work the way our house is set up right now i'm in my own bedroom and the router is literally right next to me i can like reach over and touch it and 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 even on the wi-fi at this range it could still fuck up you know, with with the connection and everything, so I've actually got a hard wire into this particular router. But if you go out on my back porch, which is where I tried to do show more regularly, because you know less chance of kids being too awful loud if they happen to show up. Yeah, the signal really really sucks. And whatever wire my dad actually has running through there to plug it in, also pretty old. Ugh. And it, or it could have been just my laptop was starting to crap out. I don't know. More but, like alligators. I could, or... Yeah, I could be true. Uh, yeah, I am not going under the crawl space anymore. No. Never mind the fact that I probably could not fit into the hole anymore. Mm. Have you, like, gone there before and seen an alligator? Is this a story that you'd like to tell? I've not seen an alligator down Confess there. Confess it all. Tell us, tell us about it. <laughs> I've not seen an alligator down there. I've not heard an alligator down there. Although, I have walked out on the back porch and smelled dead shit. That's not good. No, it's like, okay, either... We have a wet, and it's usually after a rain, or either after or during a rainstorm. It's like, okay, there's either some cats down there that are really dirty, or something died down there. Could be zombies. Yeah, that'd be the last thing I need. Oh god, what if we had a horde of zombie cats? That would... Well, look at it this way, okay? That doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing, because what does the internet love? Cats. What do geeks love? Zombies. I smell a YouTube hit. Literally, I smell a YouTube hit. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Write it. We'll do it. There you go. Oh. If you were a zombie cat, write the show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I always say that, but I do. Zombie cat. 
<laughs> You're just zombie cat. Write the show. Who else yes. was supposed to write the show? I don't remember. Oh, that that, that one group. Yeah. Oh, Sherpas. Yes. Yes. Sherpas and zombie cats. Write the show. Yes. Well, that's the thing. I, that's the thing that because I was a two cents listener from way back in the day, and he always says write the show. So oh, I, I yeah. started saying it when I was co-hosting here, and now I say it all the time in lesbian talk, and probably I don't know what I would do if someone actually did write the show, but. <laughs> I know what I would do if they like literally wrote into the show like with an email or whatever. I'd probably read it, you know, read it out on the show and respond. Just hey, just like the Dear Two segment. Dear Gomer, I think things and stuff. I know. Yeah, and and even with the old iteration, I tried that for a little bit, and I got one letter in, and then unfortunately that kind of petered out because there weren't very many listeners. Still not too awful many now, but we still have more than what I did then, uh, which says a little something. See everyone, now it's your duty to write the show. You yes. Get on there. <laughs> yeah, because that that kind of fan interaction I would love to have. You know, just like right into the show, I read your letter on the air and you know, if you have a problem, say hey, you know, I, I, I could possibly help with it in some way, shape or form, you know? It'd be just like real radio. Yes. There you go. That'd be pretty awesome. It would be. I mean and even if there's like like hate mail or whatever, if I think it's funny enough or if I think we can make fun of it enough, I'll probably read it on the show. So if you like sit there and try and troll me, we will troll you back. <laughs> All in good fun, though. All in good fun. If it's like really super obnoxious or whatever, then we'll probably just ignore it. Oh God. <laughs> and and you know, speaking of two cents, I mean, obviously it's influenced Omega and me in, in different ways. I mean, two cents influenced this entire show. You know, if, if it wasn't for me listening to two cents, I probably never would have thought to actually do this show. You should try to get him on. I've actually, I actually talked to him at one point and he was up for it, but then just life ended up happening on both. Well, yeah. Didn't they like move to another state or something? Yeah. I, I think two moved out to California. Now he and toast are going to be moving to Colorado. Wow. Yes. Yeah, I saw him tweet something like, oh, show's going to be in hiatus while I move around the country. And we're like, eh, that's cool. Yeah, and, and that thing, that stuff happens sometimes. Oh, although I don't think, uh, I, I don't think anything on our show will ever top I Ruined Your Face. Uh, if you haven't seen that, it was like late 2010 episode of Two Cents is when they started doing video. <laughs> oh, God, that broke everybody. <laughs> Oh, if, if but I, I'm not going to spoil it. Go and uncheck it out. Uh, I want to say it was close to the Christmas episode that year. So it's around the December episode. But yeah. And, and you know, speaking of influences, that's how, I, that's how I learned of Spaz Fox was through Two Cents. Got him on the show, then eventually said, hey, what about having your stuff on my site? Okay. And, and you know, if you hear me doing all you know, the things like this... I will. I, I kind of. I wasn't prepared for that. To happen. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, I wasn't either. I was like, "What?" I don't think our audience was either. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, but but the things like that. Yeah, that I I will admit I, I kind of got that influence from Spaz Fox, who I'm sure he got the influence elsewhere. But but that that I I can say pinpoint yes, Spaz Fox right there. Ah. Oh God! So, uh, is, are there any uh, any other uh, noteworthy things? Either well, at this point, either one of you, because we've kind of crossed into both of you talking about different points in memory and everything. Uh, Whenever I'm on your show, it's a good time for me to go crazy and say all the stuff that I probably couldn't say on lesbian talk. <laughs> yes. Although, although, what would be fun if if this show ends up on that guy with the glasses? <laughs> the people will see both both sides of you. Like we know what you said. I was like, well, yeah, shut up. <laughs> which, which, and, which is fine. I mean, it's it's good to have you know different different ways of actually doing different shows. Like lesbian talk, it's more you know not necessarily current events, but but more just geekery lesbian. Well, or I say lesbian. Doctor Who and Dragon Age than you'll find anywhere else. There you go. Or as me, I've got the Fort Charlie podcast where I talk about General Hospital with – with, and I've been neglecting to mention who my co-host is. Her name is Namio, who, who also has – her and her father also uh, do videos on my site as well. Um, it's a family affair. Yes, which – it's pretty awesome. They both are really great. And in fact, her dad has been on the Fort Charlie podcast a couple of times. And <laughs> uh, I, I think the one time he was like on like a full show or what have you, he was baked. <laughs> that's great that's 
awesome. <laughs> yes. It is the one of the great advantages of them living in Seattle. He can get on there, be baked, and it's completely legal. That's gotta be great. Like, no, see, because General Hospital, right? <laughs> Man, those doctors, I tell you what. And it's like, why the fuck don't you just shoot him and throw him in the harbor? God damn it. <laughs> You're supposed to be a gangster. Oh, it's, I mean, it's a lot of fun. Ah, oh. and then, of course, as I mentioned, constructive deconstruction, where we, you know, our long focus point, basically. <laughs> yeah, be constructive on your ass, damn it. Yes, where, whereas we would have, like, five, ten different news stories on here, we have, like, one or two with a theme on the other one, so... So I guess, I guess a better way to put it for those who have never heard of I, any of my shows would be Constructive Deconstruction is basically like two or three news stories with a set um, theme, usually. I, I think there have been some weeks where it's kind of eh, but usually it's a theme. And What's the GOP up to this week? You'll find out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that can apply to both this show and Constructive Deconstruction. That's true. Oh, God. Yeah, Motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> oh... So, to wrap up, we got about four and a half minutes left to to kind of wrap up. Thank you guys for listening and 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 downloading the show, subscribing, whatever. And you guys, you guys that are still listening, that are still fans, you guys are awesome. You seriously are. And and I will admit there are times where I you know it gets to the point to where sometimes I want to just say you know what. You know, drop it and just go. But two things keep me f- from doing that. One, I fucking love to do this show. <laughs> you know, I, if, you, if everybody else left, I would still be in my room doing it, doing a solo show and just be like, rah, 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 you know. But also the fans. There are not many out there, but the ones I do have, I am very appreciative of and I am very thankful for. So thanks to all of you for sticking with me for however many episodes you've been here. I don't think there's anybody that's been here for the full 100 episodes. If I'm wrong, then holy shit, it's going to be great. But, um, but you know, again, I can't, I can't say it enough. Thank you guys for listening and for tuning in and downloading and spreading the word whenever you can. Uh, that's It's really great. Um, it's been a Are hell of a... Is it fair to say that they just bought another show? Yes. They just bought another show. Another two centsism right there. <laughs> There's another Tell two centsism. Uh, but yes, and I do want to say both, both to you and both you, Holly and Omega, uh, thank you for being my co-hosts because you two rock all kinds of ass. Hey man, thank well, you. Well, yes, I friend. do rock all kinds of ass, but I'm not sure that that's what you meant. No. <laughs> <laughs> We know what you get up to on Twitter with your donuts. Seriously, have you seen my booty? <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> oh God. But and and I don't know if she's listening, but if, in case she is, and I'm definitely going to thank her directly. But Kat, if you happen to come back and listen to this episode, thank you, because you are also an awesome co-host, and the three of you are. are pretty much the best co-hosts I've had for this show. Like, no. regularly. No. So Thank you for being a friend. Yes. Travel down the road <laughs> and back again. <laughs> <laughs> now we're the Golden Girls? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That's what's going on. Uh, golden Girls, Charlie's Angels. There you go. Now, we're all be... honorary Golden Girls today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wow. So with with the sappy stuff, well, at least my sappy stuff out of the way, um, do either of you have any kind of sap you want to throw out there? Um, no, <laughs> not really. I love you. Uh... <laughs> oh, I love you too. It's, it's been a great time. I, I didn't know. <laughs> uh, Thank you for having me be a co-host. And, you know, you're like, hey, Omega's got some shit to say. You come here and say shit. That's good. Yes. Yes. And it is, it is again, I, I can't say it enough. I'm in gush mode. It has been an honor and a pleasure to have the three of you on. And it'll continue to be an honor and a pleasure from here on out. <laughs> so uh, with that, all the gush-worthy stuff is out of the way. 
I want to once again thank you guys for listening and tuning in. If you wanted to find Miss Holly Christine on the social media, where she will sometimes talk about donuts, where can we find her? <laughs> uh, you know, I just I like donuts. What can it's I say? It's always time to make ah. the donuts. <laughs> You can find me at GookyGox, G-O-O-K-Y-G-O-X, and that's all sorts of social media, Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, what have you. Um, my Etsy store is GookyGox.Etsy.com, and my Facebook fan page is Holly Christine Brown, and you can find me at Nerdvice. Yes. Nerdvice. Speaking of Nerdvice, uh, where can we find you, Omega? You can find me at Nerdvice when I figure out how to post and which is usually about once or twice a month. Um, but you can find me on Twitter as the Omega Geek. I have a site, theomegageek.com. Um, I'm on Blip as the Omega, and you know, I have a Facebook page too. Yes. Come, come like me on Facebook. Nobody else does. Yeah, yeah. You should go like her because she is awesome, and she does awesome things. And you have a new video out. I do. I actually just finished it last night, and I was really pleased with how it came out. Yes. I, I actually need to set some time aside and, and watch it. I've been busy getting things ready for several shows. Holy shit. No excuses. <laughs> oh. But if you want to find me on social media, you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at gomer 21 X. And you can find my stuff on rtgomer.com. You can also find it on nerdvice.com. You can find all of my podcasts over on iTunes. And if you want to help support the show, throw money at it for better equipment, etc. I also have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash gomer21xx. Every dollar helps, and every dollar will go towards production costs. Because, uh, I'll be honest, I could use a mic upgrade <laughs> at some point. But uh, to those, and, and one other final special thanks that I kind of forgot to throw in there. My, the, my patrons over on Patreon. Because they are actually, they are actually, uh, you know, throwing money at some of the stuff I do that allows me to do some upgrades, which I hope to use one of those in future episodes of the show. What do you think I mean by that? Well, you'll just have to find out. But if I happen to use this particular upgrade for this show, then um, you can thank all three of them because Patreon. they're the ones because they're the ones who made it possible. So um, thanks to all three of you. Um, and, and I'm even going to just name you off here, uh, Elizabeth, Jen, and uh, D.A. Scott. You guys are awesome, and thank you for you know throwing your support my way in, in, in the form of money. It's going to be I, – I will make you guys proud. <laughs> that, that, that is what I hope I will be able to do. So, uh, again, all the mushy stuff out of the way. You know where to find us now. We're going to get out of here. And until next time, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with Holly Christine and the Omega, signing off. Bye. Bye-bye. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.